Hey everyone, welcome back to Crash Course Computer Science. Today we're diving into the fascinating world of version control, specifically with a tool called Git. Imagine this, you're working on a website, adding cool features, writing lines of code, everything seems to be going smoothly and you're excited about the progress you're making. But then, suddenly, disaster strikes. Your code breaks and you have no idea what you changed. You start to panic, thinking about all the hours of work that might be lost. This, my friends, is where version control swoops in to save the day. Version control systems like Git are designed to help you manage changes to your code over time. Think of version control like a time machine for your code. It keeps track of every single change you make, allowing you to go back to any previous version of your project. This means you can experiment freely without the fear of breaking things permanently. With version control, you can create different branches of your project to test out new features or ideas. If something goes wrong, you can simply switch back to a previous version and continue working from there. No more panicking over lost code or accidental deletions. You can always restore your project to a stable state, ensuring that your work is never lost. Git is one of the most popular version control systems out there, and it's super important for web developers, especially full-stack developers who work on both the front-end and back-end of websites. It allows you to keep track of changes made by different team members, making collaboration much easier. With Git, you can experiment freely without the fear of breaking things permanently. It's like having an undo button that goes back infinitely. Plus, it makes collaborating with other developers a breeze. When working on a team, version control systems like Git allow multiple developers to work on the same project simultaneously. Each developer can work on their own branch, and when they're ready, they can merge their changes back into the main project. This process helps to prevent conflicts and ensures that everyone's work is integrated smoothly. It also provides a clear history of who made what changes and when, which can be incredibly useful for tracking down bugs or understanding the evolution of a project. Plus, it makes collaborating with other developers a breeze. You can easily share your code with others, review their changes, and provide feedback. This collaborative approach leads to better code quality and faster development times. So buckle up, because we're about to embark on a journey through the wonderful world of Git. We'll explore how to set up a Git repository, make commits, create branches, and merge changes. By the end of this course, you'll have a solid understanding of how to use Git to manage your code and collaborate with others effectively. Let's get started. All right, time travelers, let's get our hands dirty and create our first Git repository. This is the first step in version control, a crucial skill for any developer. A repository, or repo for short, is basically a project folder that Git is keeping track of. Imagine it as a digital vault where all your project's files and their history are stored. It's like the garage where you keep your time machine. Every change you make is like a new part added to your time machine, and Git helps you keep track of all these parts. To create a repo, open your terminal or command prompt, navigate to your project folder, and type in the magic words, Git in it. This command initializes a new Git repository. Boom! You've just initialized a Git repository in your project folder. This means Git has created a hidden .git directory in your project folder, which is where it stores all the information about your project's history. Git is now secretly tracking all the files and changes within that folder. But it's not like Big Brother. It's more like a helpful assistant. But hold on. Git doesn't start saving every keystroke you make. It's not that intrusive. Instead, it waits for you to tell it what's important. You get to decide what changes are important enough to be recorded in the Time Machine's logbook. This selective process is what makes Git so powerful and efficient. This is where staging comes in. Staging is like preparing your items before a big trip. You don't just throw everything into your suitcase, you carefully select what you need. Think of it like carefully placing the items you want to take on your time travel adventure. You want to make sure you have everything you need before you embark on your journey. To stage a file, which means telling Git to watch it for changes, you use the command git add. This command adds the specified file to the staging area. You can add multiple files or even entire folders. Just use git add to add all the files in the current directory. This is especially useful when you've made changes to several files and want to stage them all at once. Now, Git knows you're serious about these changes, but they're not permanently recorded yet. Staging is like a draft. It's not final until you commit. We need to take a snapshot of our project's current state, and that's where committing comes in. 
Committing is like taking a photograph of your project at a specific point in time. This snapshot is saved in the repository's history, allowing you to go back to it whenever you need. To commit your stage changes, you use the command git commit me your commit message. The commit message is a brief description of the changes you've made. It's like writing a note to your future self, explaining what you did and why. Once committed, your changes are safely stored in the repository's history. You can view this history using the JIT log command, which shows a list of all the commits you've made, along with their messages. Congratulations, time traveler. You've just taken your first steps into the world of Git. With your repository set up and your first commit made, you're ready to start tracking your project's history and collaborating with others. Remember, Git is a powerful tool that can help you manage your projects more effectively. So keep exploring, keep learning, and happy coding. Imagine you've just finished building a cool new feature for your website. You've spent hours, maybe even days, writing and refining your code. You've tested it multiple times and finally, everything is working perfectly. You've added some HTML to structure your content, CSS to style it beautifully, and maybe even a sprinkle of JavaScript to add some interactivity. Each line of code represents a step in your creative process. It's working perfectly, and you want to capture this moment in time just in case something goes wrong later. You know that in the world of development, things can break unexpectedly, and having a backup is always a good idea. This is when you commit your changes. Committing is an essential part of using Git, a version control system that helps you manage changes to your code over time. A commit is like taking a snapshot of your project at a specific point in time. It's a saved version that you can always go back to if needed. Think of it as a safety net that ensures you can recover your work if something goes wrong. It's a saved version that you can always go back to. Each commit is a checkpoint in your project's history, allowing you to track changes and understand the evolution of your code. To commit your stage changes, you use the command git commit m your descriptive message here. The m flag lets you add a short descriptive message about what changes you made. The m flag lets you add a short descriptive message about what changes you made. This message is crucial because it helps you and others understand the purpose of the commit. For example, you might write a message like, added contact form to the website. This message clearly indicates what was changed, making it easier to identify specific commits later on. These messages are like labels on your time machine snapshots, helping you remember what each version represents. They provide context and clarity, making it easier to navigate through your project's history. Committing your changes is like adding a new entry to your time machine's logbook. Each entry is a record of your progress, capturing the state of your project at a specific moment. You've now successfully saved a point in your project's history that you can revisit whenever you want. This practice not only helps in tracking your progress but also in collaborating with others as everyone can see the changes made and understand the project's development over time. Section 4, Parallel Universes, Git Branch. Now let's talk about one of the most powerful features of Git branching. Imagine you're working on your website and you get a brilliant idea for a new feature. But you're not sure if you want to include it in the main version of your site just yet. This is where branching comes in. A branch is like creating a parallel universe for your code. You can experiment with new features, make changes, and even break things without affecting the main version of your project. To create a new branch, you use the command git branch. For example, git branch feature contact form. This creates a separate timeline where you can work on your contact form without touching the main website code. To switch to your new branch, you use the command git checkout. Now, any changes you make will only affect this branch, keeping your main website safe and sound. Section 5. Merging Universes, Bringing Your Branches Together. Let's say you finish building your amazing new feature on your separate branch, and it's working flawlessly. You're ready to integrate it into the main version of your website. This is where merging comes in. Merging is like taking two parallel universes and combining them into one. To merge your feature branch into the main branch, you first need to switch back to the main branch using JIT checkout main. Then you use the command git merge. For example, git merge feature contact form. Git is really smart, and it will try its best to combine the changes from both branches seamlessly. However, sometimes conflicts can arise, especially when multiple developers are working on the same file. Don't worry, we'll cover how to resolve these conflicts later.